the shipwreck caused my younger brother and fiancé to be stranded on a deserted island. When the family finally found them, both had lost their memories and ended up together. My fiancé, with a big belly, leaned against my brother's arms, making me a laughing stock in the circle. Their story moved the media, and my parents urged me to give up my fiancé to my brother. Accusing me of being unreasonable, I refused, and was subsequently smeared and slandered, cyberbullied by netizens, and blamed by my parents, ultimately leading to my demise from depression. Reborn. I took the initiative. During their time on the deserted island, I registered an account to commemorate my fiancé and brother. Netizens were touched by me, and on the day, they were rescued. I live-streamed the entire process of finding my pregnant fiancé and my brother. This time, the real drama had just begun. Opening my eyes again, I found myself back on the day of the shipwreck. The news of the shipwreck was on TV, and the rescue operation was still racing against time. My parents were crying their hearts out in front of me, clutching a Buddhist amulet and praying for divine protection, suppressing the tremor in my body. I went up to comfort them. Dad. Mom. Joel and Misty will be okay. Mom looked at me and suddenly lost control of her emotions. If you hadn't suggested the trip, Joel wouldn't have been on the ship. Her eyes were filled with resentment, as if wishing I were the one on that ship. In my previous life, her words broke my heart and filled me with guilt and self-blame. It was me and Misty who proposed the seven-day cruise, and later my brother heard about it and insisted on going. The tickets were all booked, but due to company matters, I couldn't go and watch them leave regretfully. I thought it was a coincidence that after I died and became a vengeful spirit, I realized that it was all pre-planned by them. They had been together long before. The amnesia was fake. Misty discovered she was pregnant and couldn't hide it. So she and Joel made up an excuse to cover themselves. My vengeful spirit hovered around them, listening to their smug conversations. Joel, you're so smart. When I said I had amnesia, these fools actually believed it. Now I can be with you openly. I watched them be praised by netizens. Their island love story even adapted into a movie. On the night of the mid-autumn festival, overwhelmed by depression, I committed suicide. The two who caused my death held hands and came to my grave, bringing reporters to cry and hype up their movie. Recalling the past, my tears flowed uncontrollably. I knelt in front of my mother, crying so hard I could barely breathe. Dad. Mom. It's my fault for not taking care of my brother. If I had been more resolute in refusing him, he wouldn't have been on that ship. I. I really have no face to see you. By the end. I was so heartbroken that I fainted. When I woke up again, the family's private doctor had arrived, saying I had fainted from emotional agitation. Seeing my deep sorrow, my father tried to console my mother. Don't blame Gabriel. Joel insisted on going and no one wanted this to happen. Looking at my pale face, my mother couldn't continue her complaints. In my previous life, they put all the blame on me. I was filled with guilt and resentment. It was supposed to be a couple's honeymoon trip. How did bringing my brother even make sense? But he insisted on going, throwing tantrums to get his way. Misty said she didn't mind bringing him, so I agreed. He insisted on going, so why was it my fault? When I couldn't hold back and retorted, they scolded and blamed me, calling me heartless and ungrateful, saying I caused harm and wouldn't admit it. After that, my relationship with my parents deteriorated, and as long as my brother wasn't found, they hated me. In this life, I won't be foolish again. If it's all about acting, I can act more sorrowful than any of them. I hadn't eaten or drunk anything for several days, crying my eyes out and was hospitalized twice during this period. Colleagues and friends came to comfort me. Even Misty's family urged me to stay strong, not to break down before they were found. Since the day of the shipwreck, this incident had been trending. Even the homepage of some entertainment platforms had turned gray to mourn the dead. I picked up my phone and registered a Weibo account under my name, Gabriel. With trembling hands, I typed out and posted my first Weibo. Joel, Misty, you will come back safely, right? May the heavens protect you. I am willing to give half of my life in exchange for your safety. 
This post included a tag and received hundreds of likes and dozens of comments shortly after being posted. The comments were all prayers and words of encouragement. Every day after that, I would post a Weibo. And because this incident was so hot, one of my posts went viral after a few days. On the seventh day of waiting, why does heaven make me suffer like this? I wish it were me in trouble. Not my brother and lover. I can't eat or sleep. I feel like I'm dying. Joel, I still remember the first time I saw you. You were so small, held in dad's arms. It was the first time I felt the responsibility of being an older brother. I watched you grow up. So lively and cute. Sometimes you made such a fuss that I didn't know what to do with you. If I could have been firmer in refusing you this time, not letting you board the ship, would none of this have happened? Misty, in the three years we were together, I felt fulfilled every day. You always encouraged me and filled me with courage. You were my source of strength, but now you're not by my side. How can I muster the courage to face this? If I had been more selfish back then, not letting you go if I couldn't go, would everything be different? This post received tens of thousands of likes and thousands of comments, brought me to tears. Hang in there, brother. You will definitely wait for your family to come back. Don't be too sad. Make sure to eat well, so you have the strength to bring them home. Most comments were words of encouragement, but as the post's popularity soared, other types of comments began to appear. I don't quite understand. If the blogger couldn't go because of work, why did the girlfriend and brother still go? Isn't that awkward? Shouldn't they avoid suspicion? Seeing this comment being not putted, I smiled and typed my response. The tickets were booked in advance. Everyone squeezed in time to go. I didn't want to ruin everyone's plans just because of me. Please don't speculate maliciously about them. Thank you, everyone. After posting, people began to comfort me again. But because I only replied to this comment, it stayed at the top. The comments likes broke 10,000, although not many people echoed the sentiment. The number of likes showed many agreed with the thought. See? Everyone. Notice this. So, when the truth comes out, it won't seem abrupt. In my previous life, those two people crushed me with public opinion. In my previous life, I never posted on Weibo. After Misty and my brother were rescued, they were interviewed by the media, recounting their island ordeal. Surviving on a deserted island for half a year, they supported each other through amnesia. In that barren land, they even managed to conceive a new life, which was hailed as a miracle. Their love story touched the media and netizens, with the internet filled with praise and admiration. I, the original fiance, became a laughingstock. My parents wouldn't let me reveal the truth and even forced me to give Misty to my brother. Misty leaned against my brother, looking at me with disgust. I don't know you. The one I love now is Joel. My brother pretended to cry, kneeling on the ground and begging me. Brother, please give Misty to me. Heartbroken. I watched the media quickly uncover our relationship. I hadn't said anything, yet my parents blamed me for leaking the information to the media. Your brother has suffered so much. How can you be so cruel? Do you want to drive Joel to his death? No matter how I explained to my parents, they insisted I was the one who maliciously exposed the story to the media and wanted to sever ties with me. Around this time, photos of my brother kneeling at my feet surfaced online, along with pictures of me with another woman during Misty's disappearance. That woman was just a friend. But trolls spread rumors she was my girlfriend claiming I'd cheated long ago and only wanted Misty back after she was safe. Suddenly, the internet was flooded with people cursing me. I sought my family's help to clear things up, knowing they understood I hadn't done anything wrong, but I never expected them to become the last straw that broke me. They not only confirmed the rumors, but also said it was my fault they went on the trip because I insisted on the cruise. So, in the final days, I backed out, safe fan sound. While they suffered, they claimed I had no guilt and thought Joel and Misty deserved it. With even my own parents saying this, who would believe me? Stepping outside, I was pelted with rotten eggs and feces. People told me to die, even hiding at home. Stones were thrown at my windows. In the end, as they wished, I couldn't bear the cyberbullying anymore. On mid-autumn festival, I committed suicide by slitting my wrists. Time has returned to the present. Days went by quickly. 
And every news report brought the names of those rescued but never my brother and Misty. Even my parents lost hope of their survival, sinking into deep sorrow. I made a special visit to Misty's family. My behavior during this time touched her parents, even though Misty and I didn't marry. On our engagement day, I called you mom and dad. You are my parents too. I will never marry in this life. Only waiting for Misty to come back. Misty's mother hugged me, crying. They had only one daughter, and losing her was a huge blow. They immediately accepted me as their godson. I returned to my career but didn't neglect my Weibo since that trending topic. Many people knew about me. My Weibo only posted about my brother and Misty, gaining millions of followers. After I became popular, some thought I was riding the wave. But seeing that I never monetized my account, netizens truly believed me and were moved by my persistence. Many media outlets wanted to interview me, but I declined them all. Unwilling to appear on camera. Half a year later, I finally awaited the day my brother and fiancé were rescued. They were found by a passing ship, brought back to land, and contacted us. I eagerly posted a Weibo. Misty, Joel, you're really back. This isn't a dream. I've really waited for you. With this post as a preview, the topic quickly trended again. I secretly informed netizens about the pickup location before we even arrived. Those chasing the trend, including media, had already gathered. Along with my parents and Misty's parents, we prepared eagerly to greet them. My mother was so emotional that she cried the entire ride. Mom, don't cry. We need to meet Joel and Misty with Joe. I comforted her, and she nodded repeatedly, drying her tears. When we got out of the car, we finally saw the two we had been longing for. After six months of exposure to the elements, they were tanned like charcoal. Misty leaned against my brother, her belly swollen high. At that moment, everyone's expressions froze. Misty, W, what's going on with your belly? My mom reached out, her fingers trembling as she pointed at Misty's stomach. Misty shrank into my brother's arms, looking frightened. Who are you people? I don't know you. The kind person who had rescued them explained from the sigh. They both have amnesia. They don't remember anything. A crowd had gathered around us. I saw the uneasy expression on my brother's face. Unsure of what these people were doing. How could he know that these people were here to live stream the event? The live broadcast had already reached over a million viewers. At this moment, I covered my mouth. Tears welling up in my eyes. My face turning pale as I raised my voice so everyone could hear. Misty, D don't you recognize me? How could you? You are my brother and my fiancé. My mom's face changed, seeing things going wrong. She grabbed me and scolded. Shut up. There are so many people here. This is a family matter. How can Joel show his face if you talk like that? I pushed her away and rushed forward, grabbing Misty's hand, crying out. Misty, I am your fiancé. Don't you recognize me? I've been waiting for you for half a year. I don't know you. Misty looked flustered. She instinctively shook me off, though she didn't use much force. I reacted dramatically, falling to the ground, my eyes rolling back as I fainted, as I passed out. I saw the flashes of cameras going off nonstop, and the comments in the live broadcast chat were exploding. This reunion ended with my fainting, and I was rushed to the nearest hospital. When I woke up, I was met with a barrage of insults from my mother. Are you crazy? What were you thinking saying that in front of so many people, Joel and Misty have just been rescued and have amnesia? Why are you so aggressive? Do you want to humiliate them? My mom glared at me angrily, and my dad looked at me with a frown. In this life, I hadn't had a cold relationship with them like in my previous life, but as soon as my brother came back, their hearts immediately leaned towards him. Mom. Misty is pregnant with Joel's child. How can they treat me like this? My shoulders trembled as the door opened. And my brother entered with Misty. I don't know you. When I woke up, the person beside me was Joel. He stayed with me every day and night, helping me through those hard times. Misty leaned against my brother, her gaze resolute as she spoke, touching my brother's heart. With tears in his eyes, my brother walked towards me. Looking timid and seemingly scared of me. You must be my brother. Brother. I know you're hurting. But Misty loves me now. Forcing her to be with you won't make her love you. 
The one who isn't loved is the third wheel. Please don't fight me for Misty. I'm begging you. I'll kneel if I have to. As he spoke, my brother knelt down again. Just as he knelt, my parents pulled him up. It seemed like they were putting on a show for me. Before I could say anything, my mom scolded me. Enough. Gabriel, he's your brother. He suffered so much. Can't you be magnanimous for once? Listening to her, I almost couldn't keep up the act. Mom, I haven't said anything yet. That's enough. From now on, Misty is your brother's girlfriend. Don't talk about this outside. Joel has already suffered so much. Don't let him get hurt anymore. I covered my mouth, shouting in disbelief. So, it's okay for me to get hurt, right? Mom. My mom glared at me and scolded. Your brother has suffered so much. What's a little suffering for you? You're so unreasonable. What more do you want? Do you want to drive him to his death to be happy? They accused me while I looked at my brother holding Misty. His mouth couldn't help but curl into a smirk, as if he had anticipated this scene. Mom. Stop it. Misty and I have an interview with a reporter. Let brother rest. Stay here and reflect on yourself. My mom said coldly. Then left the room with everyone. Leaving me alone. After they left. I sighed softly. Brother. If you want fame so badly. I'll make sure you get it. I lifted the blanket and took out the phone. I had secretly set up to record. The entire scene just now was captured on it. My brother and Misty's interview was broadcasted live. I watched them on the screen. Intimately recounting their island experience. In my previous life. They became famous after their interview with netizens dubbing them the deserted island couple. When I was first washed ashore, I hit my head. When I opened my eyes, Joel was beside me, taking care of me. Food on the island was scarce, but he would give most of it to me, eating only a little himself. Misty spoke, looking at my brother with a mix of admiration and shyness, which moved the reporter. Wow, that's such a touching story. The reporter was suddenly called away by someone from the studio leaving my brother and Misty confused. The studio staff looked serious, whispering among themselves, occasionally glancing at them, which made Misty uneasy. What's going on? Joel? My brother frowned. Hearing them mention the live broadcast and videos, sensing something was wrong, he took out his phone to check. The live comments were not what they expected. Instead of praise, they were filled with curses. The previous live broadcast and secretly recorded videos had been uploaded online. This is disgusting. The brother and fiancé got together. These two are shameless. The blogger's family is also a bunch of freaks. I'm so angry. Imagining what the blogger must have gone through at home. As Gabriel's loyal fan, I've been following him from the beginning. This makes me cry. He waited half a year for this. They should have just died on the ship. They don't deserve Gabriel's devotion. Trashy woman and man, looking like wild savages, lock them up together. Gabriel deserves to shine alone. Watching the screen, where my brother and fiancé were clearly panicking, I calmly ate a piece of watermelon. Amused by their performance, Misty couldn't withstand the online abuse and stood up from her chair to explain. It's not like that. It's not like that. We lost our memories. I don't know Gabriel. The only person I love is Joel. Misty cried pitifully, and the live stream's comments began to shift. Yet, it's not entirely their fault. They lost their memories and, in that environment, it's hard not to develop feelings for each other. But others weren't convinced. Todd, White Lotus, you say you lost your memories. Both of you, where's the doctor's proof? Can you make it more believable? My brother explained with a stern face. We haven't been examined yet, but everything we say is true. After this interview, Misty and I will go for a checkup. Misty also stood up, looking into the camera with teary eyes. I truly apologize to Joel's brother. Although I lost my memories, I still hurt a Bo's feelings. Here, I sincerely apologize. Whether it's material compensation or otherwise, I will do my best to make it up to you. I'm really sorry, Gabriel. After she apologized, my brother cleverly stepped in front of the camera to apologize as well. After their statements, the live interview ended. That night, they registered a Weibo account and posted their memory loss certificates. Misty's father had connections at the hospital.
so without even having to go for an examination, a fake certificate was produced. When she posted it, she emphasized that they would compensate me with 8 million yuan. As soon as this Weibo post went up, coupled with the trending tags and paid trolls, the fickle netizens shifted back to their side. Although the blogger is pitiful, the fiancé's actions are pretty good. Giving him so much compensation, yet, considering they lost their memories, from their perspective, they are indeed innocent. I think Joel is so handsome. When he grabbed Misty during the live stream, it felt like a scene from an idol drama. Exactly. Sister. I think so too. Handsome. He looks like charcoal. Did a dog eat your eyes? Can you not attack them personally? They just came back from the island and suffered a lot. It's normal to be tanned. They'll get lighter later. The internet was abuzz with arguments. I retweeted Misty's Weibo post with just two words. No transfer. After I posted that, Misty's Weibo comments were flooded again, all unified with two words. Pay back. Talk is cheap. Show them money. Ha ha. This is hilarious. Acting rich online and then getting exposed by the main character. Not long after I posted, Misty called me. Her tone was somewhat exasperated. Gabriel, can you delete that Weibo post? I can't come up with that much money right now. I'll transfer the money to you and I get back. I'll delete it once you transfer the money. My words left Misty stunned, as if she hadn't expected me to say that. My mom took Misty's phone and started berating me. Are you crazy for money? Gabriel, how did I raise such a greedy son? Are you trying to take revenge on Misty? How can you be so vicious? And what's with your Weibo posts? Why are you posting all that nonsense? My mom's words made my emotions flare up. What's wrong with my posts? I just want them to come back. What did I do wrong? Why are you all treating me like this? How would you feel if your husband lost his memory and came back with your sister? Wouldn't you be hurt? Could you be so magnanimous? Why do you get to criticize me? I'm just venting my feelings. Why is everyone blaming me? I shouted, almost on the verge of breaking down. My mom was stunned, unsure of what to say. Misty took the phone back and started trying to reason with me. Gabriel, I understand how you feel. It's my fault for betraying you. Can we talk in person when I get back? Her voice was gentle, but I sneered. Did you see my way, Bob? She paused before answering. Yes. What do you think? Gabriel, I'm very moved. I didn't expect you to hold on for so long. Joel and I are both touched by everything you've done. If you're so moved, why lie? Aren't you afraid of being struck by lightning? Is it fun pretending to have amnesia? My sudden questioning left her speechless. I'm not lying. I really lost my memory. There's a doctor's report. Then swear right now that if you're lying, you'll be struck by lightning, hit by a car, burned in hell, and never reincarnate. My words change her tone. Gabriel, aren't you going too far? I raised an eyebrow. What's wrong? Afraid to swear. Misty's voice sounded frantic. You're being unreasonable. She's very superstitious. Always consulting a fortune teller before making decisions. Swearing like that was something she wouldn't dare do. What's unreasonable? If it's true. Saying it won't matter. I think you're just pretending to have amnesia and don't dare to swear. Misty didn't swear and hung up the phone. I saved the recording on my phone and left the hospital. Heading home. I moved out of the house. And before I left. My mom looked at me like I was an enemy. Get out and don't come back. I never raised such a selfish son. My brother held my mom, comforting her sweetly. Watching their tender moment, I felt only bitterness. Mom, Joel is your son, but am I not your biological child too? My words left my mom stunned, her expression changing. Can't you see that Joel is pretending to have amnesia? I looked at them mockingly. My mom's face turned pale. I picked up my suitcase and left the house. How could a mother not tell if her son was faking amnesia? I had wanted to ask that question in my previous life but never had the chance. Seeing my mom's expression now, I already knew the answer. Online. The situation continued to escalate. A few days later, intimate photos of me with another woman were leaked online. In the photos, I was walking side by side with the woman, eating and laughing together, looking very intimate. An anonymous source leaked that this woman was my girlfriend 
and that after my fiancé's accident, I quickly found a new girlfriend. Immediately, the narrative on the internet shifted drastically, with a flood of people coming to curse me. Look at the plot twist. The devoted man gets exposed. You're disgusting. Acting all devoted online while dating someone in secret. I've always suspected it. His Weibo posts were just to gain attention. Todd. It's all a trap by capitalists. The brother and fiancé are so pitiful. They've been cyberbullied because of you. Even though they're innocent. Wait. What's wrong with you all? There's no solid evidence. Why are you cursing him? Gabriel posted all that without making any money from it. How is he chasing clout? The words defending me were drowned out by the self-righteous mod. Just like in my previous life, I was subjected to cyberbullying. My family, after the incident, also started stabbing me in the back. They gave vague interviews to reporters, saying they did see me with the woman often, and that I stayed out all night several times, unsure of our relationship. Even my parents came forward to criticize me, making the netizens curse me even more fervently, determined to tear me apart. Misty also posted a screenshot of an 8 million yuan transfer to me, hypocritically defending me, saying everyone has their own choices and that seeing me move on and accept another relationship is a good thing. Her words only made the situation worse for me. My private messages were filled with people telling me to die, saying I didn't deserve to live. I called my family, calmly questioning why they were spreading rumors online. That woman is just my business partner. You all know I don't have a girlfriend. My mom's tone was evasive and guilty. What rumors did I spread? Did I say she was your girlfriend? You did go out with her several times, and I wasn't wrong. I laughed bitterly. How is what you said different from spreading rumors? Mom. Everyone online is cursing me. Aren't you afraid of pushing me to my death? What did I push you to do? You seem perfectly fine. Even arguing with me. After saying this, she seemed to realize her guilt and started trying to comfort me. People online are just cursing. In a few days, no one will remember you. Why do you care? I laughed, almost in tears. I hope you think the same when you go through this. Hanging up the phone, I faced the overwhelming cyberbullying without responding. My brother and Misty even called to mock me telling me to apologize to them, saying it might reduce the number of people cursing me. I ignored them, just recording their words for later. Having lived through this once, do you think I would be as unprepared as last time? I was waiting for the right moment, more than my disgusting family and girlfriend. The real killers were the netizens who cyberbullied me. Are you ready to face my revenge? The next day, I met with a nurse. She worked at the hospital that issued the fake certificates for my brother and Misty. She handed me the documents when I offered her the money. She looked at me steadily and shook her head. You are innocent and shouldn't suffer such slander. It's my duty to reveal the truth. I don't want your money. I reached out and hugged her tightly. This was one of the rare moments of kindness had felt in a long time. Thank you. Truly. Thank you. Although my initial contact with her was purposeful aiming to get evidence of their forgery. Our six months of interaction made us friends. On the day Misty and my brother went for their checkups, I asked her to help me get proof of their forgery. After we parted, I still transferred the agreed amount to her. She took a huge risk for me, and I wouldn't let her bear it without compensation. In the days that followed, I stayed at home. But the situation grew increasingly dire. The cyberbullies had doxed me, revealing my phone number and home address. Every day, I received calls filled with insults and curses. The righteous netizens gathered at my doorstep. At night, they would knock on my door, harassing me and splashing dog blood on my door. One day, as I stepped out, I was hit with rotten eggs. The person who threw them was live-streaming my humiliation, cursing me while laughing hysterically. He was someone Misty had hired to push me to an emotional breakdown forcing me to apologize on camera. His piercing laughter reminded me of my previous life. At this moment, my mental state completely shattered. I could no longer hold on, sinking into a daze, consumed by agony, leading to my suicide. My body trembled, and dark emotions flooded my heart. With red eyes, I stared into the camera, tears streaming down my face. I didn't cheat. They are spreading lies about me. 
I didn't do anything. Why are you cursing me? Why are you treating me like this? Seeing me cried. The man pushed the camera closer. Your mom admitted it. What? Is your mom lying too? Stop pretending. Gabriel, apologize on camera. And maybe fewer people will curse you. I laughed. A broken, desperate laugh. Tears telling of my despair. Is it that only if I die, will this all stop? The man hesitated for a moment. I took a step forward and screamed into the camera, pouring out all my grievances, anger, and unwillingness. It is you who are killing me. Remember that. It is you brainless idiots who are killing me. You believe anything you're told. Are you all brainless? Venting your malice on a stranger. Your lives are a mess. You are clowns in reality. So you vent your emotions on strangers. All of you deserve to die. You. And you. And all of you cursing me in the comments. You all deserve to die. After I finished cursing. I ran forward. At this moment. I felt incredibly free and relaxed. As if all the gloom from my past life had dissipated. I spread my arms and jumped into the river ahead of me. The comments on the live stream froze at that moment. I have always feared water. When I was a child, I fell into a river and nearly drowned. Everyone knows I can't swim. This fear allowed me to use the past six months to secretly overcome my fear and learn to swim. The moment I fell into the water, my senses were numbed, and I felt an unprecedented peace. After swimming until I was exhausted, I crawled to the edge of a field and fell asleep right there. When I woke up, I was in a hospital. While I slept, the internet had exploded. An audio recording and chat logs were leaked. The audio was a phone conversation between Misty and the doctor. Misty offered 1 million yuan to have the hospital issue a fake amnesia certificate. The audio was clear. With every word audible. And it was unmistakably Misty's voice. The chat logs showed someone. Presumably Misty. Contacting a paparazzi photo seller to get the intimate photos of me and my business partner. Misty even asked about my relationship with the business partner. The person honestly replied. They're not in a romantic relationship, she's just his business partner. Those outings were purely for work. Misty acknowledged this and then paid to keep the matter quiet. Pretending it never happened. She then used these photos to hire trolls and spread rumors about me online. She never imagined that everyone she contacted was part of my carefully laid trap. Without my involvement, how could she have so easily obtained those photos? And how could it be so coincidental that these revelations came out right after my incident? This was all part of my plan, devised from the very beginning, half a year ago. Every step, meticulously thought out, the scandal gained immense attention. Within a short time, the accounts were traced back to Misty herself. The public was in an uproar. The truth came to light, and my innocence was vindicated. Masses of people came to my Weibo, apologizing and expressing their remorse. The latest post had over a million comments. Everyone was worried about my safety. If something happens to him, all of you who cursed him are murderers. How can people be so evil? That trashy woman, the despicable man, and those disgusting parents they should all go to hell. When I saw him jump into the river, my hands trembled, and I couldn't stop crying. I've been through similar situations, being slandered and not believed by anyone. Even my own parents accused me. At that moment, I also wanted to jump. Just like him, I can't imagine the pain he endured from the overwhelming cyberbullying. Dear God, please keep him safe. Please. Five hours after the incident. The police found me. This search involved over 10,000 volunteers who joined in just to find me. After swimming for so long, I was indeed oxygen deprived and nearly drowned several times. When I opened my eyes, I saw my mother by my bedside, crying and holding my hand. I'm sorry, Gabriel. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. I shook her hand away. My voice hoarse. Get out. She knelt by my bed, begging for my forgiveness. Seeing the regret in her eyes, I knew she was truly remorseful. But what good was that now? I pried her fingers off one by one, speaking coldly. Go and experience the pain I felt, you slanderer. I screamed loudly, and the nurse rushed in to pull my mother away and kick her out. Outside the hospital, volunteers stood guard. When they saw my parents being kicked out, they almost attacked them. 
How can people like this call themselves parents, slandering their own son? They're worse than animals. Someone threw a drink at their faces. Once one person did it, others followed, pouring their drinks on them. It was just water. But they screamed in fear and ran away with their tails between their legs. Misty issued a lawyer's letter, claiming that the chat logs and audio were fake. This move was not well received by netizens. Her account details were exposed, and her stubbornness only made people hate her more. Misty's family's company shares plummeted. Netizens called for a boycott of their products, with some even going to stores to destroy their brands. In just a few days, the once thriving company was on the brink of bankruptcy. They were in agony. If I had endured tenfold cyberbullying, they were suffering a hundredfold. My parents, brother, and Misty's phone numbers were all leaked. They received non-stop calls. Changing numbers was useless. They were tracked down each time. And the only way to avoid the harassment was to turn off their phones. Online abuse could be blocked, but reality could not. All their properties were exposed. No matter where they hid, they were found. I was splashed with dog blood, that they were splashed with feces. A video that quickly went viral showed my brother and Misty covered in feces. My brother looked utterly broken, crying and begging people to leave him alone. Aren't you against cyberbullying? Why are you cyberbullying us? The person filming cursed at them. You have the nerve to say that. You cheated, lead, and slandered. You almost drove a living person to death. You deserve this. If you don't face punishment, how can victims' rights be protected? Unable to endure the cyberbullying, they broke down in a few days. My brother and the rest of the family called me, begging for mercy, saying they were about to be driven to death. Gabriel, your mom was scared into the hospital. Please tell the netizens to leave us alone. We really know we were wrong. Brother, I was wrong. I won't be with Misty anymore. I'll give her back to you. Brother, I haven't slept a single night. I'm so scared. They're harassing us all the time, listening to their pleas for forgiveness. I calmly repeated their own words back to them. Netizens will forget about this in a while. Why do you care so much? Just take it easy. I hung up and blocked them. The worst cyberbullies against me were also exposed. Their information was leaked. Their families, co-workers, and even their children's teachers learned it who they really were. They were scorned and cursed, lost their jobs, and felt the same pain of cyberbullying I did. Those who once harassed me at my door now knelt there, begging for my forgiveness pleading for a way out, asking the netizens to stop bullying them. Only when the knife cuts into their own flesh do they feel the pain. It was also revealed that the person who threw rotten eggs at me was hired by Misty, meant to break me down and force me to apologize on camera. Now our positions were reversed. Netizens demanded that my brother and Misty go left, kneel, and apologize to me. I agreed, and to calm the situation, they agreed to. On the day of the live broadcast, my mom, dad, Misty, my brother, and those who slandered me knelt before me, crying with snot and tears, apologizing to me. I just looked at them and smiled faintly. I do not forgive you. I will never forgive you. You didn't let me go. So why should I let you go? You killed me once. Your remaining lives should be lived in the same pain I endured.